Hi everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for tuning in. Hope everybody had a good holiday and plans for a happy new year. I'm planning to work a bunch. Of course, everybody's got to go to work. I do too. <laughs> Turbocharger and the cylinder head with the manifold all fitting. Looking, looking great guys. Our porting now, show you here in a second, get you a little zoom in. Porting is looking awesome now lines up almost perfectly exhaust port to the manifold looking awesome manifold flanges are looking beautiful now fit up to the turbo everything lines up looking great just need to bolt it all together be good to go over here had the head surface deck down just a little bit probably just under uh i think it was a tenth of a mil actually basically Buff that down on a surface plate sander just to get a nice flat surface. And now we do, I'm clean all the way across. I even came home and gave it a good scrape. I've always found that even the, the sanding and grinding process to smooth things out, it does leave a little bit of grit still. Good old razor blade, guys. Lay it on flat, scrape it across. That feels super smooth now. I can feel that on the blade. When I first started, you could feel the grit, kind of chunky. You know, you can feel it kind of bouncing across. Slow pulling across, you can get that off and get it to where, oh, it's just buttery smooth now. Absolutely beautiful. Good old flat razor blade, nothing fancy. And you can even deck the surface with a, if you have a nice flat enough plate, with some sandpaper that you can get a roll of sandpaper and lay it down flat. You can lap your head on that and get it amazingly flat. That's how I did it for a long time and it works totally good. What I used for a long time was actually, it was not a proper, you know, uh, ground surface for, for lapping. It was a marble cutting board. <laughs> It was a big marble cutting board that I got pretty cheap, and man, that thing was flat. My dad even measured it and was like, wow, that thing is way flat. <laughs> Go figure. That one came from a Goodwill. It was in the back of a Goodwill I got for like $10. <laughs> there's a will, there's a way, guys. Don't ever be, don't ever get worried at all. I can't do that. Start. Keep moving forward. You'll get there, I promise. Let's take a look at this thing, see if we can see down in here. I can barely see. I'll see if you guys can see. I'll put a little light on it. Man, it, this thing is going to flow like a turbo motor should. <laughs> it's going to hit that turbo, light it off, and woo, we are going to be making boost. <laughs> Let's show you. Come over here. Get my flashlight. So you guys can see the head surface itself looking about as good as it gets now. Just awesome. And in here, I think that one I see a little bit of dust in there. Let's see if you guys can see, see if I can figure this out. Actually, this one down here I can see in real good. And essentially what I'm looking for now is where that, where the manifold tubing lines up with the edge of the head. I want that to be perfect. I want it to be absolutely perfect. No hiccups, no flaws, no lips, no anything. Ooh, I think right there you guys can actually see it. See how that lines up 100% perfect now? There's no restriction. There's nothing in the way. It's going to line up, flow, and bang like no tomorrow. That's going to work wonderful, guys. And now especially with the exhaust port polish now. Now that the ports are polished, they're going to flow like really a Honda head never has. And I know some guys will port them way bigger than I've ported mine. That's all to personal preference. I've seen many different styles. I've seen some guys open the cups way up. A lot of that is for naturally aspirated 
Boost does not care. Boost finds out where it wants to go, gets there, and makes it happen. <laughs> it ain't happily floating through under a little bit of vacuum. So we don't need massive ports, especially it's a lot like a carburetor. If you restrict it down a little bit, that increases the velocity, which the velocity to the turbine more helps every single time. The more you can get across that turbine, that's what's going to make it all happen. So now the head is looking awesome. Just need to get us a new MLS head gasket, get everything covered up here. Good old MLS with some good old copper spray. Wish I had some copper spray in here so I could show you guys. I've used copper spray for a long, long time. Uh, it's just a, a simple spray. Get one nice good coat on one side. Hang it. Don't flip it over and set it down because it's sticky. I hang them with a zip tie. And then I spray the other side. Let it dry. Cut the zip tie. Stick it on the cylinder on your alignment dowels. Line it all up. Drop your head on. Good to go. And... Once it seats, it's good. If you have to take it back off, clean it off with some brake clean, hit it with some new copper spray, <laughs> back on the track, ready to roll. So, cylinder head looking awesome over here, guys. We are good to go. And, of course, still waiting to gather up some funds to put some new kibble white valves in here. And, of course, the new kibble whites will get lapped into these seats. Those seats are looking awesome. Doesn't look like we have any issues there. And the valve guides are looking awesome, too. You guys can see down in here now on the intake side. I poured the intake side a lot just to get them to flow. And <laughs> they are gonna flow. They're gonna flow that boost into that into that cylinder and it's gonna work out real good. It's gonna work out awesome actually. And of course, got my golf ball dimple. I don't like stuff 100 percent smooth on the intake side. I like it to ripple and dipple and move around and, and keep that fuel. In suspension the more you can keep that fuel suspended in the airstream the more that gets into the cylinder the more of that fuel that you get in the cylinder the more bang you get that's what we're looking for that's what we need now over here guys the turbocharger this is a GT 2871 there are many styles of the 2871 this one has the t28 flange this is now machined to be a T28 size flange, or the exact size to meet the turbo. <clears throat> I start out with basically, I've used T3, T2s, T28s, T25s. I think the T28 is the best because it allows me to really open up. The inner, inner size is really the only difference on these flanges. The outer is pretty much the same. I can change the bolt pattern if I need to, and I can open up the inner part to get it to flow. And see, ooh, that's going to flow good. We can see all four down. Heck yeah. So that's going to come over here. Hit this turbo. When that comes in here, that's going to light that turbine and send us to the moon. Let me show you guys here. This is where the air comes in. Since the air will come in here, because this will be spinning, the exhaust will come through here and light up the turbine. This side will be spinning. And the air will come into here and then come out of here. It'll come out of here and go into the engine. Of course, got our pistons and goodies still sitting back here. So what we're going to take a look at. Let's see. It's an exact fit. 100% exact is what makes that happen. The oil going across the, the shaft, the turbine shaft that comes up here that the impeller bolts onto that gets oil right here it floats essentially that shaft is floating when when the turbo is laying on its side essentially you know when it's laying on the side like that the shaft is floating it's floating on a cushion of oil that is being provided right here and it's not much anything over 20 psi really is almost too much it needs about 10 to 15, just enough to keep that floating and happy. And there's bearings to keep it from moving back and forth. And as long as everything is in its happy spot with oils, it's good to go. We can see up here, this is the wastegate actuator. When the boost pressure builds up, it hits this tube. The pressure comes down here, goes to the actuator. What it does here is it pushes on this rod. This rod opens the little flap. And when that little flap opens, 
you guys can see there's a hole in there that little hole is is essentially where the exhaust can escape when the exhaust escapes that is what controls our boost when we let a little bit out that will slow down the turbine which will control the impeller boost which will control everything this little guy right here is the magic <laughs> without this little bit of air pressure and without this little bit of actuator you get a hundred percent of the boost all the time and that's not good not good at all and of course this one too it is adjustable so we can adjust more spring tension to be able to control our base boost it won't control our overall boost at that point because we're adjusting it but it will control our starting boost essentially to where we can start the boost at a lower rpm the boost will start at a lower rpm essentially right off of idle that turbo is spinning because it's that gate is closed and what i'm doing i'm allowing it to open at about 20 psi but it really barely opens it opens a little bit just to vent off a little bit of the extra i'm using the charge pipe the charge pressure i'm also venting off with the blow off valve i know it's kind of a new idea it just it works way better guys i'm venting off the pressure not the exhaust the exhaust is hitting the turbine that turbo is spinning it's good we're not trying to change that because that's tough the boost pressure i can change real easy i can regulate it i can let a bit off i can tell how much to go in the engine it's not a big deal really it's the best way so over here what i can show you guys because i got things pulled apart this rotates it's all adjustable as long as the oiling section right here's the oiling section or the center section oil comes in here drains here as long as that is draining to where it can drain and be good it doesn't matter where the hot side or the cold side are adjusted to they're both adjustable and you can put them wherever you need it really doesn't matter what turbo you're using because it can all be adjusted depending on what your setup is what your manifold design is there's many, many variables, so it's okay, guys. <laughs> I promise. And what we can do here, because it is all apart, I can show you the real magic. This right here is the real magic. That curved, beautiful design lines up 100% with this impeller. Let me turn this over here so you guys can see. The way that that radius lines up with this radius, right here, you can see it all the way around, yeah, and this one spins absolutely beautiful, I just barely touch it, there's almost no force to move that thing, so once that exhaust lights up the turbine, it's going to spin, and essentially this side, the air comes in from the top and gets slung out from the sides. The turbine is the exact opposite. The air comes in here, spins it, and gets pushed out here. Essentially, it comes in here, spins up the hot side, and gets expelled out here. That's the exhaust. That's out and, and gone. So essentially, the, the cold side is just pretty much the exact opposite of the turbine. It's just essentially backwards with a little bit different design so that it actually pulls more air in. It can scoop the air. So you can see the blades, they're actually scoops. So it can actually scoop the air in to that housing. And that's what this is in the aftermarket GT2071 or GT2871 because it is the T28 flange. <laughs> it has this awesome impeller. It can scoop whatever we need. I've already tested the boost on this thing is ginormous with that engine as soon as it lights it off we were measuring at 2200 rpm with the current fueling setup it was at 17 to 1 air fuel because that thing was making so much boost instantly that's really what this whole setup is for this whole engine build is for that because i want to i want to feel that boost <laughs> it's going to work guys now the engine is currently tested if you saw the last two vids 146 horsepower on the dyno <laughs> Oh my gosh, I rode the thing home, whoa, as soon as you come on the throttle, 
it stuck one time, almost pulled a wheelie and took off. It was doing 60 in first gear. <laughs> Whoa! Next time I took off, it spun the tire and was sideways. I shifted into second. It stayed sideways, so I just stayed with it. It was just, uh, I was, oh, uh, so much fun. <laughs> this one is going to make more. This engine's going to take it. The fueling system's going to be good because I can turn it up now. Oh, if you guys haven't watched the last two vids, go back and see. Woo! All right, I guess there's another one for some other stuff for, for the Frosty Balls ride. If anybody's going to go do that, that's coming up back tomorrow. It might be warm. We're going to go for a ride. <laughs> Kickstands up. Let's roll. Thanks for watching, guys. Thanks for tuning in. Way more to come. We're about to get all this put back together. Everything's looking awesome now. Looking real good, actually. Just got to get everything. A couple more parts up here. A couple gaskets to put everything together. We're going to be good to go. Like, share, and subscribe, guys. Thanks for watching. Once again, any comments are good. I always need help, too. I I'm still trying to figure all this out. I'm, I'm no... <laughs> I ain't that smart. I try. And of course, too, if you saw before, trying to film some riding vids. I'm new to all that, too. I've never tried to film while I'm riding. I've been riding for, well, 30 years now. Never really with a camera. <laughs> We're going to try, though, because it seems like it's kind of cool. If you guys like it, let me know. If you guys want to see more, let me know. I'm just trying to figure it all out myself, too. Thanks for watching, guys. Tune in next time. More to come.